Yo guys, what is good? It's your boy Pizza Harvey and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the Scuf Envision Pro Controller. We have the IQ software running. Uh, it's the software that controls the brains of this controller. And I'm trying to share with you some of my go-to Apex Legends keybinds for this Scuf Envision controller. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look and uh, let's see the functionality of this control. Let's go on back. There you go. So that's some of the things that you could do with this controller. We have the programmable front G keys. We could snap in and out, control different sources in our OBS. We could, you know, slide in between controlling applications. We have zoom. We have unzoom. We got a lot of things we could do. We're not going to be focusing on these five right now. We're going to be focusing on these guys up top. We got the back paddles, we got the sax buttons, and of course, of course, the G keys on the front. So we got the Scuf Envision plugged in to start this out. You need the Type-C cable as well as the little switch on the back set to USB and not wireless. If you're trying to program things for your mappings or your hardware mappings, it will not work. Make sure you get hardwired in. We are going to hit the mapping section first. It's going to pull up all of the presets, the go-to presets here. So just to go over before we actually get into programming these, I'm going to review some of my buttons with you, the things that I select, the things that I use. Primarily, it's going to be the triggers on the back and the sax buttons up top. Um, all of the G keys are very personal, you know, whatever you want to set up with your G keys, you can do that. Key binds, hot keys, macro strings, face buttons, keyboard buttons, whatever you want to do. You could have it launch apps, you could have it launch groups of apps. Like I said, you could have it change scenes in your OBS, mute your microphone, up the volume, whatever it may be. You can do that with the G keys. So these might not apply to you as much as some of these other ones, but Let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this. I encourage everybody else to, you know, do some experiments in, try and figure out which buttons work best for you. In the case of Apex Legends, these are the ones that work best for me. And if this helps you get closer to something that works for you, let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to have helped. Anyways, let's get this going. Let's just go over a quick overview. I'll start on the sax buttons upper left. So sax button number one for me, this guy, real easy, click, 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 click on the left-hand side. That is going to open up my healing menu. So it's going to swap shields. It's going to, you know, open med packs, syringes, things like that. If I hold the button down, you open that drop menu and you could select whatever you got to do. No more dapping up that D-pad, doing the claw finger, jumping in front. We don't got to do that anymore. Just a side press where taking care of all those boo-boos on the top right i switched this to my grenade menu actually so same idea the grenades can be used on the fly you could tap that right sax button right on the shoulder of the control pull out your grenade you hold it you have your grenade menu you cycle through quick no more finger dapping up the d-pad we don't need that and then the paddles on the back this is how i pretty much set my paddles up on every shooter every game that i've played so far on um, the bottom right most crucial for me this is just muscle memory bottom right for me is always my jump button above that the top right i go for crouch crouch and jump on the same hand for me in tandem we have to get that working that's just where it is constantly i like jump i like crouch on that right hand uh shooting over to those other paddles X is going to be our reload or interact. So, you know, come to Apex Legends, you want to open a door, you want to loot fast, you want any sort of thing like that, reload, <laughs> click away, my boy, click away. And then Y is that bottom left paddle. That's going to be able to holster, swap weapons, you know, things like that. Get it out of the way quick. We don't have to reach up, press any of these face keys anymore. And then for this face key, G key. What I have, this just controls sources in my OBS here. So I have my gameplay screen, which is what we're looking at now. It's just capturing my standard setup. Um, I also have my face cam scene. So if I press face cam, 
controls the stinger animation gets us to our big face cam screen if i want to go back i'll press my gameplay screen nice and simple things work right now i don't have my voice mod app open but if i'm in game and i want to be silly i have some voice changes programmed to that center g key very funny voice mod download it if you don't have it the last two uh, G keys are going to program my Insta360 link camera that I'm using right here. That's going to allow me to be able to zoom in. I could zoom back out, zoom in, zoom out, get some close ups. Boom, boom. If I want to go here and then go big, I could do that and I could go back and then go back. It's real easy to use. You know, these are all set up with hotkeys or, or macro strings, whatever you actually set it up as. Um, and I will show you how to do that. Let's get into kind of rebuilding this just to give you a quick explanation. Um, if you're going to create a new profile, as you can tell, I'm on the Apex Legends profile up top. We wanted to make a new one. We're going to hit our yellow tab here. Let's go rainbow for uh, best, best Apex settings ever. All right. All right, let's go. Good best. It's a good best. All right, it didn't save the name, but whatever. We're going back. Good best. Apex settings. Perfect. All right, so once we got good best Apex settings, I'm just going to run through quick on how to program these very easy. If you want to add in new ones, we got map and type. I would say jump from one menu to the next menu to the next menu and then to the next. Because if you start clicking up here, clicking down here, clicking here, things get a little odd. So we're going to hit D-pad. We're going to hit which button we want to decide. We're going to click that button. And then we're going to press up on the D-pad. That's heal. We're going to add another key binding. We're going to go to D-pad. We're going to hit the button. We're going to hit the button and then we will hit the button again. So we have heal, we have grenade. We're going to program some face keys and things like that. You would do the same exact thing. So in my case, in my case, if you want to, you know, do some sort of key bind or keystroke or whatever it is, we're going to hit keystroke. We're going to hit the button. I'm going to hit the middle G key just because for the sake of the video, I know that this activates a voice changer. All right. So changer. So simple as that. You press it. It works. You press it again. It disables. It's easy. It's easy. You know, and to make it even easier for you, if you're swapping in between all of these custom mappings and things like that. We have this little mapping library down here. And if you save some of your mapping, so you could just clickity, clickity, click. Boom. Look at that. Crouch is on there. Now we got jump on there. Now we got swap weapon on there. Now we got reload interact on there. And then we could just press all the corresponding buttons. So swap weapon, casual. We got jump, casual. We got crouch, casual. Real easy. So. The way that you actually save these to a map and library so you can continue to kind of express add these custom mappings in is these little ellipses here you're going to click those you're going to sit hit save to library that's going to save it to your library down here so if you ever created new ones you could do exactly what i just did and fill these in quick so for instance if i want my uh my face cam on this one too face cam here keystroke boom face cam yada yada very very easy very simple we're going to map it we're going to here boom click very simple we're going to add this specific we're going to space zoom we're going to space cam cam to be here and space zoom let's go here perfect so very easy as you can tell if you wanted to map to keystrokes um this is again to control my camera uh all four is my keystroke that gets me to zoom in on my face you could program it to be whatever. You could do mouse apps. You could launch an app. You could disable stuff. You could just not have it programmed at all. You could do macros, profiles, whatever it's got to be is what you could do here. It pretty much clears up the mapping section. So as far as mappings go, um, this is going to save on your control for only when you're connected via USB-C. So... 
that's what the hardware mapping sections is for. So if we go to hardware mappings, you're going to realize you don't have the G keys anymore. The G keys become, you know, default. We have mute volume up and down. We have, we have mute mic volume up and down mute in general. And then whatever this little leaf is, I think it's like eco mode or something. What is this? I don't know. It's a leaf. You plant a tree. Um, Anyways, if you want hardware mappings, if you play Bluetooth like me and you want to, you know, get rid of this cable every now and again, and you still want those back paddles and everything to work, what we're going to have to do is set them up again separately. I know I wish the mappings library was on this one as well, but it's not. It's the same process. You just got to repeat it. Rinse, repeat. D-pad, buttons, we're going up, we're hitting the shoulder. So these are the same program six from our mappings back here. But look at this. If you try to hit mappings and go back before saving your hardware maps, it's going to tell you, don't do that, boo boo. It's going to say that's really bad and you got to go to your device settings because it won't save. That's exactly what it says right here. Just so you know. So just hit device settings when this pops up. The Scuf Envision Pro has three savable onboard memory slots. As you can tell, I have Apex Legends as one. I have my Fortnite one as a second. And then I have this third one that is going to be our overwritten file. So this is going to be the one that we're using. So make sure up here before you click over it, you got the best Apex settings you could ever possibly think of. And then you hit overwrite. It's going to tell you don't disconnect the noodle from the control. Don't unplug the wire. Don't close the program. Don't do anything weird. It's going to take a few seconds. You hit OK. Boom. Saves the best settings for Apex on your controller. So now what that means is when you are playing wirelessly, uh, you have your onboard memory. So you use your onboard memory. You press the little switch profile button here in the middle and you could tap between all of those settings so it's very simple to use um if you like things like lighting effects and, and you want to add stuff like that feel free they got a couple preset options color wheels pulses color shifts random colors you could pick alternating colors you could go from blue to like a a, a, a green or a blue to red and then when you actually press it you could go back and forth extra quick, yada, yada, as you can tell. Now, control, blue, red, blue, red. Very cute, very cute. Um, so you can do stuff like that. Triggers, um, things that I switched up here was I really just went from default to aggressive. I just wanted the, that response in the beginning a little bit quicker. I have hairline triggers on regardless for both triggers. I put uh, aggressive um, thumbsticks. They're hanging out. I have them on linear. I'm so used to linear. I'm not changing it. Vibration I have on, but in most games it's turned off. Um, and then device settings is where you would save all of your hardware mappings, things like that. Um, check for updates, charging, brightness, yada, 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 yada. Um, I really, really, really like this control. You know, I think the software could use a little bit of updating. It's a brand new program that just came out. I'm not mad at you guys, Corsair. I'm not mad at you, Scuff. I'm not mad at this control at all. The control is very, very good, very nice. I like the functionalities of it. I wish the hardware mapping could give you those G keys to use because this control is so good. There's like almost no latency difference between the wired and the actual Bluetooth. So... It's it sucks that it can't remember five more buttons because I want to use it Bluetooth all the time. Y'all, I want to use it Bluetooth constantly. I want to have all my accessibilities. That's probably my only only gripe with this control is like, why can I use the buttons wirelessly on the face if I could do these? That's my only thing. That's my only thing about this program. I'm not mad at y'all because I know y'all gonna update it. I got faith y'all gonna update it and give me my access. But if you don't. We're going to revisit this video. We're going to revisit this video. So the software is very simple, guys. It's very easy to use. You got all your programmable G keys. You got all your programmable sax buttons. You got the triggers on the back. You got to figure out ways to use them the way you like. If you like zooming in and you like zooming out, you could do that. If you like switching in between scenes and having these stinger animations go crazy, 
you could do that too. If you want to set a rage quit button, you could do that. You could do that, man. You could press G3, have it hotkey up, escape that back all of the buttons, and you out the game immediately. You can do whatever you want with this controller. Um, I hope that in the future they give you even more functionality with this because man, I have been loving using it so far. A lot of people were complaining about issues as far as comfort, disconnecting, and like you know, stuff like that. I haven't really had any issues with the control yet. I've been using it for about two weeks now. Uh, I will let you guys know if anything negative pops up about this thing. But right now, I'm liking it. I would give this like, I would give it like a 92% out of 100 right now. There's a few things that I'm not liking about it, like the non program G keys in the front, yada, yada, splitting hairs. These are the best Apex Legend settings for your new Scuff Envision Pro Controller. And if you enjoyed it, drop a like, leave a comment. If you have questions about the software, hit me up, yo. Say what's good to me on YouTube. Say what's good to me on IG. It's Pizza Hobby on everything. It's your boy, Pizza Hobby. Pizza out.